Hello everyone, Lau here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to a new flea market toy hunting video. Yep, so if you're new here, hi, I am Lau and I'm a vintage toy collector. I collect mainly the girls' toys from the 80s and 90s. So when I'm going to flea markets, I'm hunting for My Little Pony, Barbies from that era, Polly Pockets, and all those toy lines that kind of, you know, Care Bears, all that stuff. That would be amazing. <clears throat> Obviously, you do not find so many things that you really want and acquire a couple of other things. But last weekend, I think, again, I found quite a nice array of different things that I'm kind of hunting for and some that I'm really hunting for. So um, come with me to two flea markets. Um, one on Saturday, one on Sunday. Both are pretty big, so you just uh, there's just a way to do one per day. You cannot really schedule another uh, flea market that day because then you would be really late for the other one. Um, the first one is actually more like I do not find so much stuff there mostly because it's more like a an antique flea market. But every now and then, in between, <laughs> there are some booths of private vendors that you can find. At first I saw this pile of plushies, but there, yes, there are some dolls from the 90s. So a Disney doll, immediately recognized her as um, going into the Pocahontas line. And there's another Barbie from my childhood era. I mean, didn't have that one, but... And I was hoping there would be more in this basket, there were more, more toys. Uh, but mainly some generic plushies or, or, or just things that I cannot identify, which can always happen, I'm, I don't know everything. A little Dumbo, but I don't uh, collect um, like Disney figures. So these dolls were a very good start. Uh, I found these two Barbies. Yeah, I mean, one Barbie and one Disney doll. Uh, let's start with the Barbie. I immediately recognized her because she had her outfit that's um, the Super Gymnast Barbie. And uh, she's from 1995, actually this one as well, so they probably once belonged to the same girl and, oh boy, what? <laughs> um, and she or her, him got, got them at the same time. Um, so 90s doll, I love uh, the Barbies from that era uh, the most, I'm actually just collecting you could say the era of the superstar Barbies, so that's right in the middle, the 90s, the 80s, uh, 95. I actually, that's exactly when I played with Barbie. I had a um, gymnast Barbie, not that one though, because this is the second gymnast Barbie. The year before, so 1994, this one was released and this was my childhood doll. Um, the cool thing about the gymnast Barbies was I don't know if they were the first ones, but they were definitely one of the first ones that had a different articulation, you know, that you, they showed a different body, different waist, different like points of articulation. So that was amazing, especially for me, because I like to put my Barbies on horses back then. Like horse riding and Barbie horses, that was my main thing. And um, so the gymnast Barbie absolutely fell into that era, era, area. And um, I also remember seeing that one I'm not sure if I wanted her really or if friends had them or whatever. I definitely remember that uh, a gymnast Barbie in this outfit was around. And when I started collecting Barbie, I found out, oh well, there were a couple of gymnast Barbies. Because after this one, uh, I don't know if the next year or one year later or whatever, there was also a um, Olympic gymnast Barbie. And also in the 2000s, they continued with the name of gymnast Barbie with some that had even more special features. I think this one came with a um, like ring that you could put on somehow and then it, she could twirl around or something. <laughs> well, she almost can stand freely. No, better to put her on the stand, but um, she did not come with shoes, though I still had these shoes. Uh, they actually she's wearing white shoes, but I mean they they match up really well with her outfit I just have one sock. I should sew probably another one. That's a real Barbie sock um, And yeah, I still had a spare of these medals 
So she came with the same medal as the other gymnast Barbie, so I have no idea if that's from, from the first one or her. But she has a really cute face. She has um, Saran hair, so that's not the super puffy cotton candy type of hair. Um, this is, which is um, Kanekalon, so this is Saran. That's more a little bit from the feeling, a little bit more similar to nylon, like pony hair, um, but also a little bit more oily from the type. I'm not the biggest fan of this hair because I cannot really curl it that nicely, but um, yeah, she didn't have curls anyways. Uh, I restored also her bangs, but it still uh, like um, splits in the middle a little bit. So well, her outfit, I mean, you can see all the uh, stars here. This is also still intact, the gold, but the outfit actually also had uh, golden stripes in between here. And these little spots here are actually stars. That would have been uh, not just white, but also originally gold. That has worn off, but she is a beautiful doll. She reminds me of her child, of my childhood. She still has her earrings. Score. And then I also picked up this. This is Nakoma from Pocahontas. It's Pocahontas' best friend. Um, and I actually, I'm not super like into collecting for Disney dolls, though the 90s ones are really good. Um, so when I find one, and I especially love the movie because I really, really like the Pocahontas movie. It's one of my favorite, if not my favorite, especially for the music and the whole feeling of that movie. And, and I already have Pocahontas and she's from the same set. So this is the um, Sun Colors Nakoma. Um, her outfit, uh, when you put it under UV light or just the sunlight, uh, will show some leaves. I can show you that. Just wait a second. Um, here you can see it. I think it's meant to be butterflies, not leaves. I think Pocahontas has leaves. She has butterflies. Uh, just the front, not the back. Um, and she comes with her necklace. That's even better than my Pocahontas. My Pocahontas does not have her necklace. And I put her on, in, uh, on the original bun. She has a really cute face. Very different because it's not really a Barbie. It's like a, it's a Disney doll. And um, she really looks like a Nakoma in the movie. She has the super straight bangs. And her hair is in very nice quality. Um, maybe a tiny bit cut but actually I just it could also be shorter here because the way I tied it up uh, that one strand is a little bit shorter because actually she I think she had the full length so really nice doll um, this would be the full set you see Pocahontas mine doesn't have the the gold trimming anymore but yeah there's Nakoma you also got a John Smith and a Coco Om in that set this is the Sun Colors Pocahontas set from 1995 Two lovely dolls for five euro score. Herr Kleiner sagt mir nur, ich kann aber keine Scheine, wenn jetzt einer hier mit dem Fuffi bezahlt, kann ich nicht rausgehen. Hat so Bock, ist kein Geld. Ja, aber es ist ein Mühsinn. Super funny, but they are both the same. It's both Leonardo. <laughs> they are actually next mutations, so it's not. You wouldn't call it vintage, although it's actually vintage, but it's like 1997. It's from the line, like you could call it the second generation of <laughs> of turtles, I think. They they started a live action TV show. I think that's from, from that and it wasn't um, it wasn't well received at all. So, um, so I don't know, the, the toys are, they're way more rubbery. I think I never had one in my hands, but they look pretty cool. This blast toy is also so cool. I just don't collect any Pokemon stuff. I wish that it would have been full, but they're empty. I mean, there's other tins in there, just tin boxes. I think those are like cassette boxes, cassette uh, luggage cases, whatever, cassette cases. Aladdin. Cool. But. I think I'm gonna stay with the turtle. That's cool. <laughs> Another turtle figure. <laughs> yeah, um, lately I picked up quite some turtles. I mean, not a lot, but here and there. And they're always in super bad condition, yada, yada, yada. Uh, this one is in good condition and it's actually not a quote unquote, like for, from the vintage 
at um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles line, which ran from 88 till 96-ish. This is from 97, so it is from the kind of second iteration of the um, Turtles toy lines and also what it was based on. Uh, it's from the um, Next Mutations line. Uh, the first line of Turtles that had so many characters and oh, so many vehicles and all that stuff, playsets, uh, was based like loosely on like the cartoon and on the um, like um, comic that predated it actually. Uh, so it was a mixture of both. But when that had kind of, I don't know, sales maybe weren't as good anymore or whatever, they changed it up and they made a live action TV show that looked a little bit more like the three live action movies that were out and um, that were pretty popular, especially the first one, but that live action TV show didn't pick up. Absolutely not. They probably didn't have the budget of the movies and also they kind of um, I introduced a female turtle and that also didn't really, I don't know, that didn't pick up. Boys didn't like it. I have no idea. Um, so also the toy line was not really successful. A lot of people who collect vintage turtles um, don't like the uh, next mutation ones, but it's actually pretty cool looking. I mean, it looks different. It looks, the heads are definitely smaller. The faces are a little bit more, I don't know, not as cartoony or like big and funny, uh, more serious maybe. And also they feel very different. I mean, they have quite good articulation also. Um, but I feel very rubbery. I mean, even more rubbery than the movie Turtles. Um, quite good feeling, to be honest. So I just picked up this Leonardo. So I actually all, only have <laughs> Raphael's in my collection. So at least I have a Leonardo here um, for three euro. So why not? To be quite honest, I don't know what they actually are. Wow, it's kind of a full set, six of them. My guess is maybe wings. They are very elaborate, so much glitter. And the wings, you know, they can flap. And some of them have batteries at the back. Wow. If you know what they are, uh, I can't find out. Like this one has a button here. So then the wings go up. I don't know. They don't have a manufacturer at the back. It just say rainbow. I mean, maybe that's the manufacturer. Look at those shoes. My guess is that they are maybe 10 years old or something like that. But I don't know them. Probably wings, right? Probably some kind of wings dolls. And also these like little figures. <laughs> the funny thing is when you take them off, like this one, for example, <laughs> they are a, a pen. You can write with them like a biro. Do these have a kind of a manufacturer? No. So my guess is that's wings. And wings could also be from the early 2000s. But I think they are newer. They just look newer. Well, it's nothing that I would pick up. But super interesting. Whoa. Yeah, so this vendor already from afar, I could see there were tons and tons of toys, like boxes filled up to the brim with dolls. So, yep, I kept my hopes uh, high and like went into it, but nah. so mostly it's baby dolls and very small ones like these Shelly um, Kelly doll. I think that was the uh, potty training one that I actually have with kind of the same bad haircut. Um, yeah, and upon digging deeper and deeper, nah, I'm not really knowledgeable and also not interested in like these types of dolls 
I just pick up like the bigger size dolls when they are really from, you know, the glittery early 90s things like Lil Miss, stuff like that. All the rest that gets more into the like baby doll territory. It's just like not for me. Also, I'm not the biggest fan of these Shelleys. This is one of the QPs. I'm not sure when they are exactly from. Also not my type of toy. Cute, but yeah. I have learned that there are so many people that have so much like more knowledge than me and the different types of toys but I'm also not really interested in gaining knowledge in, in, in these dolls so like nah. oh the QP fell behind and uh, there were more boxes definitely so this was there were also a couple of Disney things like this Pinocchio some of these old uh, rubber squeaky toys baby book and more dolls and more baby stuff and yeah or better no <laughs> i think this is some kind of doll that people might be interested in i have seen this face a couple of times and i think some of you have already told me what they are called yeah i have forgotten and i'm not into them on this desk i oh, yeah, were just a couple of pokemon cards and um, miniature toys, probably from Kinder Surprise Eggs. I think these were well, all children's books, and on top of that, more toys. VHS tapes. It's always so much fun to dig through them, although I would never pick any up um, because they just take up space and basically, you know, we have streaming services and all of that. I have Disney Plus so I can watch Snow White on there all the time. So. Oh yeah, one of those um, Land Before Time, which is not Disney, obviously. Babe, do you remember Ein Schweinchen namens Babe? I actually don't know what it's called in English, Babe. I exactly had that 101 Dalmatians VHS back then. But yeah, I don't need to pick up VHS tapes at all. Uh, ah, the Lion King one. But I always like to dig through them. It's like a little bit walking down memory lane. And plushies. Uh, to be honest, too many plushies in that little bin. A little, it's a big bin, to be honest. Um, probably most of them very generic ones, but I can also not tell because there might be some really like valuable ones that I have no clue of in there. This is a new art doll, one of those candy... I forgot what they are called, candy something. Uh, the, I think the only Barbie there, but like, in, like the only adult Barbie, but a new one. And more VHS tapes, the Backstreet Boys, <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, and The Lost World, which is my personal favorite Jurassic Park movie. What have we there, Leon? I don't know. Oh, this is the original Land Before Time. And then I got to these boxes again filled with little small toys, which usually, usually I don't find anything there. It's mostly um, Kinder Surprise Egg or like small miniature rubber figures but I at least I try it like I think this bag oh this is a Halloween ghost um, and I think this bag was full of fillies but you see that one that's not a filly that's a little dinosaur and it has a diaper on yeah I'm interested I might know what this toy line is about so the, the rest is all these uh, Simba fillies, these miniature small ponies. And 
other stuff. Yeah, and after digging and digging in, in, in those boxes of dolls and yeah, that was actually a, a vendor that had so many toys. I was like <laughs> even surprised that there was not more like for me. But I picked up this little dinosaur with a bottle and a diaper. And yeah, it's a magic diaper baby. <laughs> last flea market video, uh, the last weekend before, I found my very first magic diaper baby. I don't intend to collect them. I just picked one up because like, I wanted to show it to you. It's a toy line from Galoop from the early 90s. I think 1991 they started. And they were like little babies like human babies that had like diapers that could change in water to blue or pink and if it's a blue then it would be a boy and if it's pink it would be a girl and they also um, produced like magic diaper babies that look more like or like were animals like dogs cats whatever and also a set of dinosaurs and that's from that's from that set and um, I don't really like anything that has to do you know babies and diapers and uh, it's not my thing especially not humans but I love dinosaurs and this is really cute there's like 12 I think there were 12 to collect and um, there's from um, 1992 this one so the uh, dinosaur set oops came out a little bit later than the human baby sets <laughs> there's nothing more that I can say it's made by Galoop as I said and um, these ones I would be more willing to pick up um, if I find any more diaper babies of the human size never the human size of the human uh, shape no thanks but the dinosaurs are quite cute I repainted the bottle a little bit yeah but other than that it was really really <laughs> dirty came out nice so this box looked at least a little bit interesting so that's why I got my camera out started filming there were a couple of um, dinosaurs and lots of wooden furniture like doll furniture furniture I was hoping to again when I start digging for dinosaurs I always hope to find some uh, Jurassic Park ones but sadly not the case this looks like Alice in Wonderland cat I don't know not sure um, from a live-action movie but um, then I, this one, I thought it would be the, the whale from, from one of the um, Barbies, but this, this kept me really surprised. It's a Thundercats figure. I looked at the feet, it says LGN, Thundercats. And yep, I also recognized this little um, buck looking dude. It says Bandai, so it must be Kamen Rider. Oh, Mask Rider in the West. picked up these two action figures was actually pretty surprised to find uh, something interesting in that box I just started filming because there were some dinosaurs something and I just start filming me grabbing in a box when I think there could be something interesting and I saw a couple of dinosaurs in that box uh, not really expecting to find some vintage action figures in there uh, this is a Thundercats figure and this is uh, from a mask of Kamen Rider. Let's start with Thundercats because it's actually the more uh, important pickup, I think. Um, this is Chitara. So the female character, or the main female character, well, they're more male characters, obviously, uh, from the series and toy line Thundercats. And um, the toys were made by LGN in the mid 80s. So that's from 85. And also the cartoon um, ran around that time. It's actually, uh, I've never watched it, it's kind of before my time. But I think it's a pretty good cartoon and the story sounds really interesting. Uh, there are all those like humanized uh, characters that look or have some features of like different cat types. So Cheetah, Chitara, that's like, she's more like a cheetah. She is the fastest runner in the group. Um, and also she has the foresight, interestingly enough. Um, the, the main character is, um, a lion -o, so based on a lion etc and I'm really that's my first Thundercats figure I found I, I like to have some of those you know colorful weird action figures from that time I'm also 
I have a couple of Masters of the Universe figures, etc. So that goes really well along with it and I'm pretty happy to have found the female character. It was a pretty popular um, IP back then. Um, here you can see the Thundercats logo, there were also comics, etc. So, and the uh, TV show obviously was a tie-in with the toys, <laughs> to sell the toys. And um, same with as with Masters, I at first found the female characters. The first female Masters of the Universe characters I found were Tila and, um, and Evelyn. And now for um, Thundercats, the first I found is Chitara, which is very cool. She has this lever here and when you pull it, you can move the arms up and down. She is missing her accessory. I think she came with a big staff. Um, yeah, LGN 85. This guy actually um, made by Bandai in 95, so 10 years later than her, um, is, is a kind of a strange thing. Um, you might have noticed it looks a little bit like a Power Ranger. It's not a Power Ranger. I don't you know, ever pick up Power Rangers. Because, I don't know, I just don't really like them. It was I knew Power Rangers when I was little, but it was nothing that I was really interested in. And I find them a little bit boring. I don't know. Um, at one point I might pick up Power Ranger. But this one looks so <laughs> funny and cool and um, the similarity to Power Rangers is because it's based on a, um, on a Japanese TV show. So there was live action, uh, there were live action Japanese TV shows like of these super human characters, uh, masked etc. And that one um, IP, all of the different seasons were taken over uh, from the US to make the Power Rangers franchise out of it. Completely different storyline, completely different. They also shot additional footage with the you know US actors, etc. But the fighting scenes were all from Japanese footage. It's the same with Kamen Rider in Japan. In Japan, very very popular, like action um, TV show with this masked hero. He was always riding a motorcycle and you know being the hero, rescuing people, etc. But with this one, the transition to uh, America wasn't that popular, like wasn't that popular and wasn't that well made. They were not able to secure enough of the seasons uh, to have enough footage, and so they had to shoot a lot of like U.S. footage with you know the normal actors that were not fighting. So there was a completely different storyline. I think it was more like a um, like a sitcom or more comedy-esque, I don't know. Um, it was translated to Mask Rider in in um, in America or Europe. Like that's actually the same common rider, Mask Rider. It's just a, someone who has a mask. You can't see it. He's riding bike. So anyways, he looks like a bug. <laughs> and uh, the toys, same as in the US, were made by Bandai. So uh, same as in the US, same as in Japan, were made by Bandai. So it's a Japanese toy company. Um, it just looked funny and um, both figures together um, so e every piece of in these boxes was like one euro that was fine for me yeah and one of the last vendors before heading out had uh, at the ground uh, these uh, big boxes with all sorts of figurines action figures toys other little goodies there's a wolverine I think there's more like, I don't know, Marvel or these DC superhero things. Ah, this is a Mummy's Alive, I think. Um, yeah, a lot of things that I obviously cannot identify. A little fakey, a very ugly fakey pony. Uh, these. A G.I. Joe type of figures. I don't know if they were Leonard or real G.I. Joe. I wasn't too interested that day in these figures. And they fall back off Barbie shoes and brushes. Hmm. I like it. What's underneath? Oh no, just a big comb. This is McDonald's stuff from Hercules, I think. Some of these, um, I don't know, GDR dolls. Uh, 
this is a Batmobile. I have no clue to what toy line it belongs. Like, is it if it was a 90s Batman toy line? Oh, a little rarity. So at least a pony, but nah, not, not too interested in those. Again, uh, McDonald's, I think. Uh, this is a DC figure, I think. I'm not too uh, knowledgeable about DC. Robin, maybe. Another G.I. Joe. I'm not sure about the real one. <gasps> oh, this is the strawberry shortcake. Without clothes. <laughs> There are definitely some cool sets in here. I have no clothing for her, but I decided to buy it all. That's super cool. Yup. I picked up the whole bag of Barbie brushes, but there were also some uh, other Barbie accessories in there. And this little strawberry shortcake figure. Let's start with the strawberry shortcake. Um, it was naked and it's not easy to find any like a real strawberry shortcake, like garments, clothes separately. Um, hell, when you find strawberry shortcake online, most of those don't even have all of their outfit pieces. It's a very popular toy line from the um, like early 80s, you could say. The very first figures were even produced in 79, made by Kenner. So kind of around the same time of like Kenner making Star Wars, but yeah, it was made more like a girl IP for girls uh, with these little um, figures that were scented and were themed around something like sweet to eat, like a strawberry shortcake or other pies, lemon something, whatever, whatever. And um, this is actually Huckleberry Pie. And it's actually a boy character. <laughs> I don't have any clothes that resemble this little guy. And obviously, uh, the the body is so different to any other dolls that I have like it can can't fit Barbie clothes or whatever um, I was lucky enough to have this little dress that fit him her <laughs> uh, really nice and I just added this little headband looks cute it's also really difficult to find matching shoes even my other strawberry shortcakes most of them don't have matching shoes because they you cannot fit any type of shoes other than the real strawberry shortcake shoes on them. Um, with this little bob hairstyle, it could even be a little girl or I mean, boys can also wear dresses, why not? Looks pretty sweet. Not really my aesthetic, like specifically, like this is a little bit more like too natural looking for me, but I think it matches the vibe of the original strawberry shortcakes pretty well, so he, she whatever will go on display like this and actually fit in with my strawberry shortcake so it's pretty cute look at this little tongue sticking out here and these little like button eyes actually pretty sweet um the interesting thing is they're really not rooted very well can you see that there's like all these bold spots everywhere um most of them came with hats so that was not a big issue so but i don't have the hat yeah the real uh, outfit would be like dungarees like looked like denim dungarees long and i think a yellow hat and a purple shirt or something so not not a dress and yeah whatever and then this big bag of barbie accessories yeah all of those are superstar barbie era brushes sadly really only the brushes so you know the typical brush shape that you mostly like like also think of when you think of Barbies and um, Barbies had sometimes other types of combs like some that looked like like seahorses you know some of the um, like mermaid Barbies or there were others that but here just like a huge variety of those in different colors and the interesting thing is actually a lot of them are marked a lot of them have the name of the Barbie on it with a year Spanish 1991, Navy 1990, Radiant and Red 1992, and those are actually all collector dolls. So not a lot of those are from um, Playline dolls, you know, like like this, like a gymnast Barbie or whatever, a Hollywood hair Barbie. Those would be Playline dolls made for the children. 
especially like from the like late 80s on and then full 90s and still uh, nowadays Martel is making lots of like really dedicated collector dolls that are not really you can take them out of the box but they're also art piece in the box already they're made for adults who just collect and not play with the Barbies and a lot of these combs are from those so my guess is this lot originally once came from a Barbie adult Barbie collector that uh, then maybe took the box took the um, Barbies out of the box displayed them but put the combs separately and to remember which one goes to which they marked it really interesting lots of different colors and i love that because i really want to have a full rainbow of barbie brushes um probably will put it together in a glass like container or something similar as i have it with these little blind bag ponies or that i have it with them um, other combs and brushes um but I was not only interested in this lot because of that, but it also came with some other accessories, like these skis here, for example. Those go to the Ski Fun Mitch from 1991. Also, the little gloves are there. And there's also a pair of um, ice skating shoes. I'm not sure if that uh, set the Ski Fun uh, came with ice skating shoes. Maybe it's from another doll like the Ice Capades or uh, Holiday on Ice or whatever. Here you can see them, but like these skis. I don't have that doll, but I don't know. Maybe one day I will have it. I really, really would like to have a Mitch. These are the little gloves or better, yeah, they're more like mittens. Um, and then shoes. So quite a variety of different shoes. Sadly, not as many like pairs as I wish to be. I mean, the one that I immediately saw is this one. These pink cowboy boots that I really want because my um, my Western Fun Barbie doesn't have any pink cowboy boots. She's still wearing white ones and she would need pink ones, this hat. Uh, also, uh, these ones are a little bit too bright for mine, but I will still put it on her. These come from another doll. Uh, I, I'm blanking the name, I will put it now here. It was actually also stuck on with a little sticker, I just already removed it. Strangely enough, this comes from a doll that also was more like, um, I want to say collector doll, but it was a Walmart exclusive, so I don't think that people over here in Germany were able to get them. So, really interesting stuff, collector dolls, stuff that was more like available in the US. Uh, a couple of pairs of shoes though, that's, that's good, for example. Like these ones that are um, 80s shoes you can still so you can see it made in the Philippines there's these 80s heels and I don't know a couple of other ones like these pink ones for example a pair of pink typical 90s heels can you see that yep the more chunky ones you can definitely see the difference between like 80s and 90s heels the 90s ones are so much more chunky and then 80s ones are so like more thin but yeah i wish there would have been more like complete pairs but it's a super interesting lot i would like to know um like where where that actually comes from like back to school i think is a playline doll but here for example mexican 88 it's actually the most interesting one Dolls of the world, Mexican. But um, for example, here are two in the same, almost the same color, but the Mexican one is like shorter. Like, can you see the brushes there, the brush uh, pieces? They're shorter. Like I've never seen such a Barbie brush before. Um, most interesting one for me, but I paid uh, for all of this and this little strawberry shortcake doll like 10 euro maybe a little bit too much for just these brushes but then again it's lots of brushes a lot and also a couple of other accessories that i wanted like the pink boots and so fine by me and yeah that was my little lot from the first day so let's switch to the next flea market on sunday the very first toys i saw that day were these barbies and i really like the face of this one so i kind of knew had an idea what she was 
but I needed to get her clothes off for uh, uh, finding out, which is not really easy when you have one camera in one hand and in the other hand you can just yep but it was it was uh, the locket surprise barbie and she is one of the most beautiful faces from the 90s she has this like locket inside her you could open her up but she was really discolored and had cut hair so not for me um but at least i could identify her look at this found another fakey elephant and this is mermaid barbie's comb this is so cool i just have it in orange or whatever so from another mermaid barbie this is the original one and look what i found this is a poly pocket oh my gosh it even comes with a figure love it a little dirty from the outside but i think i can definitely get that off Ooh, fakey but nah Nah, no, 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 no. Is it a Remco fakie? No. It's a fakie of a Remco fakie, so <laughs> I'm not gonna pick that one up. But I'm so happy with this little lot. Great. So, yeah. And, whoa, it started very good. With a vintage original Polly Pocket and some other little pieces. Oh my goodness, she is always falling. Ah, let's lay her down. Um, this is really one that I was looking for. This is one that I don't have. It's the Polly's Hair Salon from um, 1980, no, from 1990. 90? Yeah, it's from 1990, not 89, it's from 1990. It's one of the octagon shaped ones. And um, I did not have it. I was looking for it. My focus in Polly Pocket really is right now on three different things. If you've seen my Polly Pocket unboxing video, uh, then you know that. I'm focusing on the early typical compact shapes. I'm focusing, I want to focus at least, um, on um, lockets and on the Vacation Fun series at the moment. Then this was right in front of me, like this. <laughs> uh, it was not super cheap. I mean, people at flea markets, even at flea markets, they know that Polly Pocket is a little bit worth a little bit more money. I've never found like a vintage, old, cool, good Polly Pocket for a euro or something. She wanted 12. Um, I was haggle, I was able to haggle her down to, to 10. And then I found some other pieces from the same uh, girl, a woman, and it came down to 11.50. So. That's still very good for one that I really wanted, so... Uh, it's in pretty nice condition. The logo obviously is not as good anymore, but a lot of mine have a little bit worn off logos. I was able to get that residue off here. It's pretty nice and shiny again. And the inside is so nice. It's so pastel, pink, purple, and the light yellow with a little bit like of mint. Uh, it comes with one figure which is super nice it's a oh my goodness she's pretty loose but it's a correct figure let's take her out here it's pixie the poly of that set is missing but the poly of that set isn't really rare um i might even have it i just checked it i don't know in which compact it could be um uh, if, if not i will be able to get it at one point maybe or if not then at least i have the hairdresser which is pixie her face is worn off and she's as i said pretty loose so not very good but anyways uh, the upper part really interesting it's not just a hair salon here's a tanning bed then you go down there are the hair dryers where you sit and would get your um, your late 80s early 90s perm lots of utensils here and then downstairs this is really the part where you would sit and get your hair cut uh, there are the mirrors here yeah, here's one mirror and here here's like the sink for your hair washing uh, all of these little utensils like combs and mirrors and um, hair dryers this is probably the cashier then it has the super cool checkerboard and um, bottom i have seen that a uh, compact of these kind of compacts often when the like bottom because it's more like it's a sticker it's already like worn off or ripped off really good quality here still so not ripped off or anything and the only moving part is actually just the door but that's typical for these early compacts and um, so happy with this the day could not have started better bluebird toys and it says 1990 
and this little fakey elephant I also took with me. I have quite a lot of them already. I like them. They are kind of ugly, but they kind of go into the same era of, you know, My Little Pony. They're just like fakies and not in a pony like mold but in an elephant mold they are out there in quite a lot of colors sadly i only mostly always find the you know flesh colored or like light orange ones and green ones they're also light green and blues and yellows and yeah anyways uh, another fakey elephant for my collection the hair is awful i just was able to like uh, braid it because when you start to brush or wash or whatever this hair it just falls out it, they're rooted so badly that it it, you just can pull it off with your fingers. Um, yeah, little tacky elephant and two brushes. Uh, this is the Mermaid Barbie brush from uh, the Mermaid Barbie in 1991. Um, this style, you see it's another style of Barbie brush or comb, uh, was introduced in, it has a date of 87, so I think with the Tropical Barbie set from that time. So really nice, I don't have it in that color. I have Mermaid Barbie, now I have her bra, uh, brush comb very good and then I picked up this one this was like that was a mystery to me uh, the oh, like this um, the woman who, who sold it to me also couldn't remember where it actually came from these were hers from her childhood she said maybe with little dolls um, it has at the back it says um, MII and then 1993 uh, and I from, from that information, I could find out what it goes to. MII um, stands for Mauritius Toys. It's a toy company that also made the um, Darling Dinos. That's what I think is it's most well known for at Kitchets. Kitchets as well. Um, and this was a line similar to the Darling Dinos. Darling Dinos were a little like uh, similar to My Little Ponies, but just in dinosaur form with brushable hair, colorful, etc. And this goes to the Charm and Farm friends. Also, little animals with brushable hair. Similar to My Little Ponies, but more like farm animals. So they were, this was, I think, belonged to the pig, the barn dazzlers or whatever. Um, uh, you know, and, and yellow and green and long brushable hair. There were cows and, and all of these other animals. And this is one of the brushes. I wish uh, one of those like farm animal charm and farm friends would have been there, but this was all they had. They just had one other fakie, so. But very cool to be able to find out through a, a brush to find out a toy line, so yeah. Sadly, there's no like girls' toys, but again, lots of Power Rangers, and yeah, you know that I don't pick them up. <laughs> but the most interesting thing is actually this one. Like, do you remember at this very flea market, I found this like obviously out of the package. But I have this camera, I have this Pikachu camera, and here it is in in the package. And I guess this was the original receipt. It like back then. 80 Deutsche Mark, but was pretty expensive. I still haven't tried if mine, like mine works kind of, but I've never put a um, film in it. <laughs> and lots and lots of retro games. Game Gear? Yeah, those are Game Gear. Nice. I mean, this is cool. This is uh, like Dragon Zord or Lion Zord or something Zord. <laughs> oh, an old Nintendo game. Magazines. Mm -hmm. Back then, I used to have like these kind of um, booklets to help me play my games. I definitely had it for all my Pokemon games and I think I had it for some others. Because I was always way too stupid to really play the games on my own. <laughs> I always needed these. <laughs> so I have to say, today at the flea market there's so much like retro gaming stuff. So much. Literally so much. Thank you. 
Yes, another one of the um, Sternlicht ponies from Zimba. The glow in the dark fakies. And I don't have that color. I'm so happy. Gosh. And from uh, this little elephant, you saw it. I switched over to another fakey, this time one of these little Sternlicht fakies from Simba. They are one of my absolute favorite uh, fakey types. So fakies are, you know, fake My Little Ponies. Uh, the original My Little Ponies are all from Hasbro and every other company that kind of made like Pretty Pony, Sweet Little Pony, whatever they were called and in different like a little bit uglier molds and definitely cheaper quality, those are called fakies. And um, this is like a one that's made by the German toy company Simba and um, definitely like early, early 90s, late 80s, something like that. Maybe even in the 80s already because uh, in the 90s Simba had a different um, toy line of ponies or also fakey ponies. I think these came before. Um, I have already quite a rainbow together of those. Uh, I didn't have a blue one, so perfect for me. They all have just this little symbol of these three stars. The cool thing is they glow in the dark. Yeah, so Sternlicht pony, that means like starlight ponies. Um, they're looking a little bit like donkeys. That's why people have dubbed them to, to be called like donkey, fakies or whatever. Uh, Glue esel, some German people say. Uh, I think they are, they're kind of ugly but cute in the same way i really like them i would now now never leave one behind so nice addition and cut yeah we are already over the uh, 50 minutes uh, mark again and i have at least another 50 minutes of footage so let's stop this video here and return to this uh, flea market adventure uh, in the next video so um, I hope you had fun until here with these uh, very different uh, toys. So like, I mean, different in the terms of we had action figures, we had cutesy dolls, we had a Polly Pocket, Barbies and so much more. So thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe if you're into these kind of videos. Um, give it a like and also maybe comment if my comments are open. So thanks a lot for all that you are doing. And uh, yeah, see you real soon and may the choice be with you. Bye.